Greetings. This is Doc I coming at you live and direct from Black Facts Headquarters Central. Who we sometimes, sometimes makes me feel like a motherless child, but that's not our problem today. Uh, not even the Black Fact for today. Proverb for today is we must build and develop our inner spirit and force. And that's from the mind of Haki Matabuti and his liberation narratives. We got a few more days of Brother Haki's poems, and then we're going to be moving on to the poetry of Eugene Redmond coming out of East St. Louis, Illinois. So one for, we went from, we're going from Chicago all the way down the river to uh, East St. Louis. Now, as for our black fact for today, does the Aswan Dam cross the Nile River in Uganda, Sudan, or Egypt? And the answer is Egypt. So we'll come back at the end and we'll give you your black fact question for tomorrow. Something to grow on. I always got to give you a little something to grow on. Answer one and give you one to grow. All right. So now, so tonight, our story is about this brother right here. Oh, now you see, they spelled his name differently here. Here they spelled it Paul Kofi, C O F F double E. Paul Kofi with a double F and a double E. Sometimes they only put one E on the end or one F in the middle and two E's on the end. The name is spelled various ways. I spell it K-O-F-I. So there's all kinds of different ways, but they all equal Kofi. They all mean the same thing, and they all come from the, the, um, the general area of Ghana, modern-day Ghana, but they are names that are common in more than one um, language but all part of one language group, the uh, Khan language group. So you have Chui, Eve, Ga, Bronga, Hamfra, et cetera, et cetera. And so Kofi is a uh, popular name in those uh, various languages that are part of that language group, and meaning a male child born on a Friday. Now, um, you could also see here, let me show you this picture again one more time. You can see here in the background, down here at the bottom, you see this is the reason we're talking about him because Paul Kofi ship, I believe he, he built ships, but he definitely owned ships and he was a he was a, uh, a captain. So the sea was his thing. He liked traveling back and forth on the waters, started out traveling on the coastlands, and then he took it all the way. Black to Africa, and that's our story for today. Black to Africa with Paul Kofi. So let's see. When did he live? 1759 to 1817. He was an early businessman, and they say here a colonizer, which I'm not sure why they call him a colonizer exactly, but let's read the story and see if we can find out. Paul Kofi was one of the most unusual of all the men from New Bedford, Massachusetts, who went down to the sea in ships. Unlike most Negroes who sailed in those days, Kofi was no mere deckhand or roustabout, but a ship owner and entrepreneur. He owned several ships and made his living hauling cargo to different parts of the world, not just of the United States, but the whole world. Starting with a small boat built with his own hands, Kofi became the owner of sloops, schooners, brigs, and several other ships of various sizes, the largest being the 268-ton Alpha, which in 1806 he and a crew of nine Negroes sailed from Wilmington, Delaware to Savannah, Georgia, and thence to, Gothen to Gothenburg, Sweden. Six years before this, Paul Kofi had sailed the 162-ton hero around the Cape of Good Hope. So that's that lower, that, that the very tip of Africa, the very bottom of Africa, 
That's where the Cape of Good Hope is. Almost to the um, Antarctica, as a matter of fact, very close to Antarctica. They actually have, um, you can actually go to the beach in South Africa and see penguins on the beach because it's, you know, it's that close to Antarctica. Fearless, capable, and energetic. Paul Kofi at one point owned one regular ship, two brigs, and several parcels of land. After spending considerable sums of money on various projects, Kofi was able to leave an estate of over $20,000. Now, mind you, he died. The man died in 18 and 17. So $20,000 then was worth a lot more than it is now. However, Kofi was not solely interested in making money. As a free Negro whose father had been a slave, the status of Negroes in New Bedford and elsewhere was a paramount concern to him. One of Kofi's earliest acts was to have the family name Slocum changed to Kofi. For Slocum was the name of his father's master. At this time, Kofi was 17 years of age. Two years later, he and a brother, John Kofi, sued in the Massachusetts courts for the right to vote. The suit was unsuccessful, but it did help make possible legislation to achieve the same end several years later. Going to sea at the age of 16, Paul Kofi was able to purchase a $3,500 farm in 1797 for himself and his Indian wife, Alice Pequit, Pequit. While granting the vote by this time, New Bedford still had no schools for the offspring of free Negroes. At his own expense, Paul Kofi built a school on his farm and with money out of his own pocket, hired a teacher for free Negro children, a Quaker and a Negro. He had a double interest in the free of the Negro. Enlightened opinion at this time generally favored colonization as the answer to the incipient, incipient racial problem. Look that word up. I-N-C-I-P-I-E-N-T. Don't do it now, but do it later when you get back up. Incipient racial problem. In 1811, Paul Kofi sailed one of his ships, the Traveler, from Westport, Massachusetts to Sierra Leone, Africa, where he founded the Friendly Society for the Immigration of Free Negroes from America. The War of 1812 interrupted his colonization plans, but in 1815, he took 38 Negroes to Sierra Leone at a cost of $4,000 from his personal funds. Kofi planned many more trips with black colonists, but his health failed and he died in 1817. And that's the story in brief of Paul Kofi, captain of the sea, independent thinker, just like me and absolutely, totally free. And so there you have it again. And this is actually a contemporaneous image that you see here. So this is something that comes from back in his day. And that's obviously is a silhouette of Paul Kofi, right? And then I'll show you one more picture here. I don't have a picture of his ship, but you can see, if you wanna see some color images of ships similar to his, you can see these here would be similar, but the what's different would be the, the mast and the sails, the way the sails deploy in the mast. It wouldn't be these triangle shaped ones you see over here, right? But they may have been comparable in size. I'm not sure because I don't know that much about ships and how much the various ships weigh, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. But I do know something about Captain Paul Kofi who took us black to Africa this evening, all the way black to Africa. Now that's in Sierra Leone. That's also, I have friends that were from that are from Sierra Leone, but I don't know a lot about the history of Sierra Leone, except that it was a colony set up by the British to send their slaves back to Africa or their former slaves. In other words, if they freed anybody, 
Then they go ahead and just ship them black to Africa because they had their way with them already. They'd already got whatever you say we're going to get out of them for free. And at that point, they didn't want them to be a burden on their society. In other words, they didn't want to have to pay any expenses when they got older or uh, decrepit or anything like that. So they just wanted to just ship them all black to Africa. So at any rate, that's our story for the night. Let's see. What do we have here for you for a Black Facts question for tomorrow night? Let's see what we got. Uh, oh, here we go. Here. Did Dr. Alexander Augusta serve as surgeon to the U.S. colored troops in the Civil War or was it in the Spanish-American War? You tell me. Did Dr. Alexander Augusta serve as a surgeon to the U.S. colored troops in the Civil War or the Spanish-American War? Which war did he participate in as a surgeon? That's Dr. Alexander Augusta or Augusta. But you spell it just like the word August and put an A on the end. So go ahead and look that up. See what you can find out about Alexander Augusta. And meanwhile, we're signing out. All you little children, time to lay your little heads down on your little pillows, on your little bed, close those yeah, yeah eyes and wait for that good old sun to rise. When you feel those sunbeams beaming on your eyes, it should not be any kind of surprise. That means it's time for you to go ahead and rise and begin your day anew. That's what we like you to do. Don't be blue. Begin your day anew with a big old smile and do it in style. As for you adults, you already have your marching orders. You know, we're still in the midst of our fall fundraising campaign, the 2020 2020 campaign. I posted up a new ad last night that takes you directly to the link. I'll be posting up some more ads as time goes on that will tell you other things you can do. The one I posted up last night was for Dr. Crosby's birthday. His 88th birthday is coming up on June the 4th. So we're putting together a special uh, month dedicated to honoring Dr. Edward W. Crosby, the father of Black History Month. That's right. We're going to be honoring him and his relationship or his role in creating the discipline of black studies, creating the discipline of black studies. So that's what we'll be, we'll be uh, talking about for the entire month of November. I hope um, uh, many of you will be tuning in, but I'm uh, we're also looking for more of those donations. Let's go ahead and send them on. Because the more you send us, the better we can serve you because it means we can upgrade what we're doing in terms of the stories that we're telling, in terms of how we're telling the stories, in terms of our visual aids. By the way, all these visual aids that we're using, like this really fly one here of Paul Kofi, these are all made by us right here in house. Okay. We don't, we're not buying these, but we, we are putting the time in and the effort to make them. So we have to buy the materials, but then we cut them up, size them up and bring them out to you like this. So go ahead and uh, do the needful. Don't be don't be like the greedful. Do the needful. Peace out now. This is Doc Ock at noon and nine signing off. We'll be black tomorrow at noon. See you then.